Hi again everyone and thanks for tuning in to Fist Cluster Care. In this video we'll be continuing on from the Audi TT Mark II teardown video which I'll link to you up in the top right hand corner there to continue on modifying the cluster to have the Color MFA installed. Now this will just be an overview video of the installation but I will do a detailed step-by-step -step guide once I have more kits come in. Okay, so first step, we've got to remove the instrument cluster needle. Any one, either fuel or the coolant needle will do to be able to pivot the foil up here in the center. Next is to lift up the OEM LCD screen and remove the screen by lifting up its little black lock piece that you can see there on the right. And then the screen just pulls out easily. Next step's gonna look a little bit scary because you do have to cut where I've circled. So cutting at these two spots allows this center frame to be removed. And then this is where the color MFA screen and motherboard will reside. Okay, so now I've got to this point where pretty much all of the prep work is done. The original screen's been taken off, the frame has been taken off as well <clears throat> but I can save those taking off this just the one needle so this can swing up and down just for the ease of um, removing the OEM screen the little resistors have been taken off so now all of these LEDs can stay it's much easier to remove these than all of these so they can stay but they won't light up um, and then now it's just a matter of wiring in the color MFA board so that it sits in here and wires up into the car. All right, so stay tuned guys. I will definitely have an update for you. Whether or not this is successful, we <laughs> will see. I hope it is because this cluster is pretty broken right now. Okay, so this is the current state the install is in, the board is half in, I'm just feeding all the signal wires through to the back of the board so that some of them can connect to here and then some of them need to connect into some power and other signals in the car. It looks like a mess, um, but it kind of, it does make sense to me. Um, yeah, so I just gotta basically put that down here, attach the screen, and then testing in the car can begin. Now this is just showing you the positioning of the color MFA screen. You can see that it is a bit of a tight fit and the frame has to sit right up against the LCD. Now the screen's fitted, it's time to do a bench test. Now I'm just cheating a little bit here. Obviously there's no ignition and 12 volt from the car coming in. I'm just directly giving it power and ground from my little PCU unit. So that's looking good. Time to test fit with the front frame on. So you do have to be a little bit careful when refitting the front frame because you have cut out the main OEM frame. The control stalks kind of flop around, but once the front frame is on, they're held in place anyway. So there we go, everything just goes right together once everything's in place. Now, doing this modification does keep the function of those two control stalks as per OEM, so that's really nice. Now just doing some final power tests here and it all looks good. Okay, really rough first example. Live. Looks like that's on. Oh, shit. 
So the little clicking sound that you're hearing there is me playing with the wiper stalk buttons because that's how it's supposed to be controlled. But obviously something's wrong, but with a little bit of troubleshooting and working into the night, I do eventually get it functioning well. So you can see here, that's how errors will show up. You can clear those by pressing the confirm button. And then we can just scroll through using the up and down on the wiper stalk as you would normally with the OEM screen. Just check out this nice little detail. It's a TT, <laughs> so good. So that's where I decided to call it a night, but then got too excited and the next day decided to do a little bit more. So here I'm just going to show you guys a quick test run with the engine idling. So you can see that the values are live on the instrument cluster. A couple more warnings here. So these are just things that can be fixed up with topping up the coolant or looking at the error codes, which you'll see I'll scroll through to in a second. But that coolant one was actually not an issue and is a firmware glitch where on the first startup, this red coolant light uh, comes on, but then as you can see, it goes away. Now, as this video comes to an end, first of all, I'd like to thank you for tuning into the Fierce Cluster Care channel. Hope you're enjoying the content so far. And let me know if this is something that you'd like to do in your Audi TT Mark II 8J. Is the Color MFA something that you'd like to see more of? Is it something that you can see yourself using? Check out all these little functions here that you can see me scrolling through. Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you'd like me to make the installation guide nice and detailed or quick and snappy. In the meantime, thanks for watching and watch out for the review of Color MFA in Audi TT Mark II.